My name is Supriti. I'd like to welcome you to Indus Valley International Film Festival 2020. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. Uh, all of us just watch this very, very beautiful film, uh, Pakistan's Best Kept Secret. And um, frankly, this film dekhe mujhe bada man kiya ki main ek din Lahore jaun aur ye film zero dekhe jaun. So uh, before I begin, I want to uh, inform our viewers about uh, what a prestigious moment this is for us that we have uh, Shahid Nadeem ji present with us uh, today. This is uh, what we would call Midnight children, uh, one of those born in 1947, just the time when India and Pakistan were created. And um, he's been a voice of righteousness, I would say, uh, as a journalist, as a human rights activist, uh, when he worked with Amnesty and then in Pakistan, uh, when he uh, took up certain uh, Also, along with that, he's, uh, of course, all of us know he's uh, been the director of PTV Academy and he's the founder director of a Joka Theatre Company along with his uh, wife, uh, where uh, both of them do some wonderful work. Uh, so it's obviously a great honor for us to have Shahid Ji with us today, who also uh, is the director of this film, Pakistan's Best Kept Secret, on the Lahore Museum. And uh, I'd now like to, Shaiji, if you permission, ho, to I would like to ask you a few questions. It's a pleasure to be part of this festival. In fact, uh, I should be welcoming you because I uh, represent, uh, claim to represent Indus Valley civilization. So, uh, and you uh, have showed your um, um, uh, your love and your affection. Uh, and related to the, the ancient civilization uh, of Indus Valley. So uh, it's a great pleasure. Great. So, Shaiji, first thing, of course, you said in the film that uh, colonialism was a mixed bag. And we got some things which were good and some things which were not so good, like plundering of our resources. Um, but one good thing was, of course, the starting of this museum, the establishment of this museum. If you don't mind, can you take us through a little bit about the history of the development of the museum? Kabi aisa daur aaya beech mein jab is museum pe koi expansion ya kam karna band ho gaya ya maintenance ke liye, you know, there wasn't much interest. Or fir usko fir se kaise revive kiya apne? Well, in fact, uh, Indus uh, Valley civilization, of which uh, uh, Lahore Museum is one uh, proud part uh, or carrier of that uh, civilization, uh, that was kind of abandoned by the creators of Pakistan. So when Pakistan was created, they were more um, focused on establishing that we have nothing in common with India and uh, this is a country created in the name of one faith and one ideology so anything which does not uh, uh, come under the uh, that uh, limited vision of um, uh, identity national or cultural identity that was disregarded and sometimes even discarded so uh, anything to do like theater or um, music and performing arts and uh, other contribution of uh, uh, Indian Muslim um, uh, communities over centuries or within this present day Pakistan, um, the contribution of non-Muslims um, from the pre-Islamic days. So all was kind of surrendered or discarded. So museum became a victim until today. That's why we call it uh, the best kept secret because the museum is there, but it's not really there. I mean, the city of Lahore, who should be proud of um, this uh, rich uh, miracle uh, of 5,000 years in uh, just a, 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 a confined space, somehow uh, they are either not appreciative or they are not aware or they are not enlightened about the significance 
uh, of this uh, museum for our uh, identity and our cultural links. And that is one problem, the national identity problem in Pakistan. We sometimes look towards east, sometimes towards west, and now uh, more uh, recently towards north. So I think uh, the intention for this museum was to bring it to, uh, to the people of this country and to the world, uh, this message that uh, this museum is not just a museum, but is it's a microcosm of our uh, uh, cherished history. I think that comes out very, very beautifully because, of course, uh, thanks to because the way she is such an expert in the field, the way she explained everything uh, so eloquently. Uh, she's, of course, so knowledgeable, having been the director of the museum. Uh, it was really nice to see, um, you know, uh, uh, different uh, religions <clears throat> being, uh, you know, uh, depicted there and exhibited. So whether it was Hinduism or Jainism or Sikhism or Buddhism and, you know, uh, there were different uh, exhibits reflecting that. It was very nice to see that because it brings forth to the rest of the world, whoever will watch this film, uh, will begin to connect with Pakistan as a more liberal and a more secular uh, place, contrary to some, uh, you know, mainstream news that we uh, seem to get. So I wanted to ask you a question. Jo aaj ki generation hai, um, schools tour organize kar diya so aate hain masti karte hain idhar udhar dekhte hain wo buddha ki shakal dekhe to usko frown karte hain ya uski nakal utarte hain so matlab they are not very sensitive or very much rooted in uh, the civilization which uh, this museum represents. So, ek to ye problem hai ki bachpan se unko uh, pehli uh, class se jo unko bataya jata hai ki hardly the word Indus Valley is hardly mentioned in our curriculum. Or uh, ye bataya jata hai ki jo kuch hai wo uh, Islamic era or especially pre uh, post 47 jo hai na wohi hamari heritage hai. So, इसलिए उनका इतना इसमें कोई इंटरेस्ट नहीं होता दूसरा यह है कि वैसे ही आजकल की जनरेशन जो है वो किताबों से भागती है पढ़ाई से भागती है म्यूजियम से भागती है और ज्यादा अपने लैपटॉप और अपने जो स्मार्टफोन्स हैं उसमें घूम रहती है तो जरूरत ये म्यूजियम इज ब्यूटीफुल एंड इट्स सो रिच एज यू हैव सीन इन द ग्लिम्सेस इन द फिल्म you it's still it's a very lonely place and very like uh, this um, heartening place you go back to history and then somehow you don't link up with the, your present so there is a need for this museum to become alive to become more interesting for children more audiovisual more colorful more happening place and that unfortunately is not happening so the museum is not conveying the message. The younger generation is not willing to embrace this museum as their uh, uh, treasure. So, Shahid ji, ek aur cheez hai ki this is a very common uh, issue. I think. Nitya, aap thoda zor se boliye. Acha. इंडिया में पाकिस्तान में या दुनिया के किसी भी कंट्री में आप देख लीजिए कि यूजुअली द यंग पर्सन और द चिल्ड्रन ऑफ द कंट्री आर वेरी लेस कनेक्टेड टू द कंट्रीज हिस्ट्री एंड मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम दे आर नॉट एंड दे सीम टू डिसमिस इट व्हाट कैन वी एज एडल्ट्स और थिंकर्स डू to uh, you know make them more engaged in that space one is of course if we could alter curriculums but we all know those are under certain controls but as independent people apne itna kaam kiya hai to awaken and make people more aware about their rights and certain issues so what can we do to make children 
uh, more aware about our history and get connected to our heritage, which is 5,000, 7,000 years old? Yeah. Well, uh, firstly, we have to get educated ourselves, the elder generation, because we also, we carry the baggage and uh, we have been indoctrinated. And um, I think very few people, for example, in India, would um, have an idea that such a museum exists in Pakistan and where all religions are very respectfully and um, in a very um, adorable way presented. So firstly, we have to educate ourselves and pool our resources and help each other. Secondly, as I said, we have to make uh, the museum uh, not uh, an enforced visit or something uh, which is disconnected with their reality. So it should be a uh, happening place I means they should have uh, concerts there, they should have exhibition, they should have children parties there, they should have music or some other cultural activities. And secondly, the presentation, the content, the artifacts, of course, you uh, have no, no uh, right to make any changes there. But the presentation or additional material like uh, any, anywhere else now, especially in the West, you go to a museum, you will get um, the, the information on the screen, on the uh, uh, internet, and then you'll have some colorful presentation. There, there might be a clown uh, roaming about, there might be a tea stall where people are sitting and chatting. So I think for, to attract the younger generation, we should uh, make uh, a museum a, an attractive place where they can hang out and where they can link their past with their present. So, Shahid Ji, this is one thing that we go to London or Paris or New York, we find uh, there are very big museums with the best of facilities and guides and you know, technology, everything supporting us to uh, view the exhibits. Now, uh, it's often said that uh, art and museum is a rich man's hobby and passion. Uh, so in developing countries like ours, like India and Pakistan, where there are thousand other issues that are plaguing uh, our uh, leaders, you know, thinking of putting heritage and museums together and investing money in that uh, seems to be not very uh, top priority, unfortunately. Uh, but um, how do you think we can do that? I mean, is it only government? Is it uh, somebody who's from the private sector who can invest? Is there a crowdfunding mechanism so that we can pick on uh, smaller donations? How do we do this? Maybe um, jo, um, Western museums and there might be a rich man's um, visiting place. But in uh, Pakistan and also I think in India, uh, it's really a poor man's place. You can see the poverty of uh, a nation, the economic condition, because they are not very colorful and dazzling and full of technology and full of very uh, well-dressed uh, um, uh, guides. So uh, there's nothing wrong with that. It should reflect the society as it is. But what I'm trying to emphasize is that it should be lively. So even uh, in a, a country with limited resources, you still can be uh, can have a lively place. You st you, you, uh, I mean, the old concept of museum is that this is just uh, you're preserving something ancient and that's it. So I think uh, museum is more than uh, like a place where um, some um, uh, variable things are buried or um, uh, protected. So um, the governments, I think, uh, can um, have interaction. I mean, there's so much treasure in terms of uh, museum material in uh, India and Pakistan, so much uh, which is shared. So they sh I, ideally, they should have uh, exchange of their valuable material. For example, the Monjudaru's dancing girl, uh, which was the key f figure in the Indus Valley civilization and uh, is a great cultural symbol 
for both India and Pakistan for their performing arts. That 5,000 years ago, you see a performing artist performing uh, in such a lively way. Even today, she appears live to us. So if that is lent to Pakistan for um, maybe a few months, uh, brought to uh, Lahore from Delhi, then I think um, it will be a great uh, cultural coup and there will be great interest in the civilization and in the exchange between the two countries. Secondly, I think we should, uh, the awareness uh, depends on building uh, our uh, arts or our uh, mythology around the museum. So museum is full of so many So you, you have uh, music composed based on those stories. You have dance numbers uh, uh, composed um, uh, uh, around those stories. And you can have theater, like uh, the play I did on Dara Shiko was actually uh, inspired by the, that period of history. So I think, uh, I mean, having uh, cultural um, events and cultural activities, which are linked to uh, the museum and also to our live audience, I think that uh, can be a big uh, bridge. Yeah. I want to say one thing as a tourist, that uh, Abroad and gone to a museum. I always notice one thing. Well, as a tourist, every time that I have traveled to a museum, I always notice one thing. As a tourist, every time that I have traveled abroad, uh, whether it's Paris, London, New York, every time I visit a museum, the last room that the tour leads me to is a commercial space. It's often a shop, a bookshop. Yeah or a shop where exhibits of, uh, you know, different pieces in the museum are being sold. And I find that that commercial space invariably makes you buy something as a tourist and bring home and, you know, keep with you as a memoir of that trip. Uh, but somehow this commercialization is not there in India and I don't know if it is there in Pakistan. Uh, but definitely that is a big uh, revenue generating, uh, you know, method that can also be used by the government. But here it not In India, I have probably seen in museum that you end up the tour with a, uh, a, a shop where you can pick up some souvenirs and, you know, so what what is your thought about that there are people who don't like it i'm not really um, a great fan of uh, consumerism and um, sort of commodification of uh, our culture but uh, as a fund raising exercise uh, it, it can be done uh, but you, uh, you should realize that for uh, western countries where you have tourists from all over the world and people who have dollars and euros and pounds for them, uh, buying something as a memento is simple, uh, is a different matter. But here, uh, if we have common people from India or Pakistan going to a museum. And if they have to pay for uh, even uh, 100 rupees for a museum visit in Pakistan, actually it's even less. It's very, very economical. Um, so then uh, uh, you have to be well aware of the value of uh, your um, heritage to spend a few more hundred rupees to buy things. So, um, so it's, uh, I think if we have a lot of tourists and hopefully uh, terrorism subsides and Corona subsides and we have tourism um, prospering, then I'm sure that they will come and they would want to buy things. For uh, local um, um, visitors, it's better if they are given some message at the end, not message in a propagandist sense, but something linking uh, what they have experienced to their present. Like um, the uh, Lahore Museum, the, the, the final uh, um, gallery is modern art gallery, where you see uh, some of the images which uh, we have inherited from Indus Valley or Mehargarh or Gandhara civilization, they are used now in different uh, costumes and jewelry and paintings. So, so that is one way of doing it. 
and then have uh, some performance, some mime show or some costume show, so, so that they come and realize that look, the Mwenjo Daru girl was uh, dancing this dance, or she was wearing this jewelry which uh, my friend uh, has been wearing. So this is one way of linking their uh, distant past to their present. So I think some innovative ways of uh, uh, making these people get more than just um, an amazing uh, visit uh, back to history. I mean, it should be more uh, enlightening. Uh, I have uh, I've seen in uh, Lok Virsa, actually, uh, uh, they have created such shops, not just one, they have two shops where you can purchase uh, and they also exhibit uh, 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 representation from all cultural heritage. They have Buddha statue, they have uh, Hindu Sikh uh, 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 symbols also in Lok Virsa, like in uh, Lahore Museum. And uh, I think a bit commercialized also because they organize on a regular basis programs, performances, and uh, and sometimes yeah. they have donor passes also. Uh, the donor passes are sold uh, to attend those performances. Uh, so I think they are able to preserve it because, because it is also visited by a large number of people. Lok Virsa is not an isolated place. It is visited by a large number of people. So I think they have experimented and implemented it uh, more smartly. What is your uh, view? Yeah, I mean, that is a great uh, cultural uh, museum, but it's a different kind of museum. It's very well laid out, very well designed and very colorful and thematic, very well organized. Uh, but it's not a museum which uh, uh, has the, the rich um, uh, content like Lahore Museum or Textula Museum. Uh, so, um, but they are doing a good job. It, then it is in Islamabad, so you have diplomats and you have tourists or you have um, sort of uh, uh, well-to-do classes. So they come and they enjoy the atmosphere and they... Uh, so it's more uh, targeted towards uh, tourists or foreigners, uh, although it's a great initiative and a great experience. But uh, I think the, the regular uh, old-fashioned museums uh, like Lahore Museum, they need a different approach, not purely commercial approach, more a cultural approach, which, uh, because in Pakistan, we desperately need uh, uh, some roots and some understanding of our um, identity. And we are so confused about it. Where do we belong? Where did our, our journeys uh, start? So, um, we need a different approach and it's then uh, perhaps you also in India, which uh, agree with me, it all also depends on the government and their policies or even the um, 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 directors or officials who are uh, taking care of such museums. Like Sumera who, in the documentary, she was a very passionate and very knowledgeable um, uh, sort of museum person. In fact, she comes from a family that her uh, father, although he was a professor of English, but his house was full of artifacts and from uh, ancient civilization, Rekshla or uh, Shavar Swat or uh, Adappa. So, uh, but then she was transferred to another job. Now she is secretary adult literacy. So. <laughs> And a bureaucrat has come who has like maybe six months or one year to retire or he is now waiting for another more lucrative, more influential appointment. So then they don't really take much interest. And the society in general is not very sensitive or very eager to sort of take some pride in places like our museum. So that is a, a great uh, handicap, the system which we have here. But still, I think things are better now than before. And um, I think governments and some international donors, they are willing to support um, some, such places, museum or uh, other uh, intangible heritage sites. And they are being developed and preserved. And um, I hope that um, this uh, leadership of the Lahore Museum or such museums 
should be in the hand of professionals who have a stake, who have an understanding and who have not been transferred from irrigation department to museum and then to maybe electricity department. Do you think there could be a collaboration, a direct contract collaboration between museums of different South Asian countries? Uh, yes. Uh, so to exchange uh, and expose uh, young people in other countries of what they have, I mean, through, through digital mode or through some other mode, uh, maybe uh, also organizing uh, tours also for students from other countries. Yes, definitely. I think uh, South Asian uh, nations, they all one way or the other link to uh, Indus Valley civilization. The word Hindustan, I believe, comes from Indus and uh, here in Pakistan, I mean, it's a part of uh, our um, existence. So, and similarly, other countries, they have so much uh, cultural or historical links. So they should get together and they should uh, share their resources and exchange um, officials, exchange uh, expertise and also exchange of uh, young people so that uh, museums become uh, bridge, uh, bridges of peace. The Lahore Museum uh, exists inside uh, La Lahore Fort, I think. And, uh, and I have visited, yeah, Lahore. Yeah. Yes, and I have visited yeah. Lahore Museum as well. So it is inside Lahore Fort, so there is some uh, 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 restrictions also, heritage restrictions for to visit. Uh, there are timings also. Uh, because when port is open, then only you can visit Lahore Museum. Is it? Yeah, uh, Lahore Museum uh, has more restrictions because they're still uh, having excavations and preservation, and they're finding new things all the time. And they, so, and there was uh, some, uh, I think, uh, uh, condition also by the donors, the Norwegians or UNESCO. And to uh, ensure that uh, uh, these um, new discoveries are not pilferaged and uh, not uh, in any way harmed. But uh, Lahore Museum is regularly open uh, for everyone. And, um, but there are a lot of very valuable stuff in Lahore Museum for which they don't have the space or um, for some other reason, like the coin collection, very few people know about it or paintings of um, great masters uh, like uh, Chotai or uh, Shakir Ali, Alabaksh or uh, Satkan. So they are uh, preserved. And then uh, there are some uh, 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 these um, uh, Qurans or some other uh, handwritten uh, books which uh, date back to centuries. So all this stuff is uh, 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 okay, protected and uh, not available generally, but then um, uh, it has to be at some point, maybe once in, in a blue moon, at least be made available for people who are uh, interested and uh, who want to know more about Lahore Museum. So there are some restrictions, but otherwise the Lahore Museum is an open secret. Uh, I don't know if there is a an auditorium, but if an auditorium is uh, constructed uh, in the near the Lahore Museum, it can pave lot of uh, yeah. uh, way for lot of performances like Ajoka uh, Theatre to perform uh, different shows there. So it will connect people. It will bring people, and then it will connect people with the museum. You're right. Uh, they have, uh, I think, a, a small auditorium, but not. Uh, appropriate for any performances, uh, theatre or music or dance. And uh, this would have been the ideal thing to have a place there, a performance place where uh, groups can come and perform, where um, uh, culture as it is, is uh, seen uh, linking with the past. And uh, for that, um, I think the space is there because uh, they have some extra space. There is a library on one side. There is National College of Arts on the other side. National College of Arts uh, has a beautiful um, auditorium. Uh, but, so if they link up, uh, then um, maybe uh, this can become a happening place. But right now, because of 
so many problems as you know in pakistan we had and uh, previously it was the the terrorist uh, uh, virus and now it's the corona virus so even mm -hmm. access from museum to uh, national college of arts is impossible this barbed wire and uh, there are security guards so there is a total cut off between the two institutions although they were designed by the same uh, person and uh, they were meant to be part of each other and the uh, uh, national college of arts was supposed to be the uh, uh, the extension of the law museum and for education and training and inspiration for young people because i think succeeded because they they uh, organized regular performances so uh, give them food for not just priest i see many schools organizing their uh, school functions inside lok versa so it has created a space where schools colleges bring their students uh, and they organize performances so this helps to get food fall and also create awareness among young, uh, young children young students yeah the the benefit for lahore versa was that they have ample space around it this is place called shakar padia and there is sort of um, the um, lok versa itself has huge space and then even if they want to extend uh, there are um, so not any uh, so the populated areas nearby and it's beautiful location also so you can have open air performances you you have indoor right. facility right and uh, if you have uh, directors who are dedicated to the cause of uh, culture uh, then um, they can do wonders and people who and there are more than one uh, directors who have stayed there for a long time and who are very passionate and they they was just saying he was there for a longer time yeah akshi mufti was there and then fazia said also played an important role recently now we have got uh, mr talha who is also quite um, a man of uh, culture and very uh, indigenous uh, upbringing so um, uh, yes you you are right that uh, having uh, performances and having uh, interaction and um, that uh, that makes a difference in lok versa very few restriction on common people going in exactly. so there is exactly. but generally roaming about there is no ticket and they have some uh, op open air free activities also and then they have their um, uh, performance area open air theater they have i think they hardly charge uh, anything there also so that's and a also, good uh, example and also they have uh, traditional food stalls there are five six stalls where they only sell traditional uh, food yes that's right So, uh, yeah so uh, of course uh, that is very important for uh, us south asians that uh, desi food should be there with desi culture they go together uh, supriti patna yeah. yeah. wazni ali supriti patna uh, museum jo bana hai bihar mein patna mein तो पटना म्यूजियम के साथ में उन्होंने एक ऐसा रेस्टोरेंट बनाया है जहाँ पे यू गेट ओनली ट्रेडिशनल डिशेस एंड रियली द वे दे सर्व द काइंड ऑफ वेसल्स दे सर्व इन एवरीथिंग इज ऑल वेरी ट्रेडिशनल सो इट गिव्स यू अ फील ऑफ लाइक एन एक्सटेंशन ऑफ व्हाट यू सॉ इनसाइड द म्यूजियम सो आई थिंक ट्राइंग टू ब्रिंग दीज अदर एक्सपीरियंसिस ऑफ food of music of dance of uh, conversations on talks everything can uh, enhance the uh, maybe the the value that people see in visiting a museum uh, so uh, shait ji i'm going to ask you one more question because this plagues me like anything the fact that uh, you know we don't seem to ever have funds to develop our museums So this is a thought I had once. Uh, I don't know if it's blasphemous or not, but you know, in the film world today, uh, in India, we have found that uh, uh, our uh, local uh, film uh, producers are tying up with uh, Universal Studios or with Disney or 20th Century Fox, and then they are producing something together. 
because uh, those uh, hollywood uh, film companies are seeing a big market in india and uh, so they want to tie up with the film company to mere zehen mein aise khayal aata hai aksar ki aisa nahi ho sakta ki louvre ke sath ya met ke sath mein koi tie up ho jaye hamare museums ka taki wo funds de to usme thodi si i know there is this whole issue of our um, identity being uh, possibly uh, assumed but may not also happen we can negotiate for that do you think that will work so you did uh, quite and you mean there should be uh, such, such films screened there or may may bol rahi hu suppose the met the museum in new york suppose right. decided that uh, it will uh, you know uh, partner with a museum in india or okay. pakistan yeah let's say it will be uh, you know called uh, either supported by the met or the met and the name of the museum in india yeah. or pakistan but they get the right to do that only because uh, they will have to uh, give us some funds which we really need and uh, um, and they will uh, you know get to open up the people's minds to uh, there is a met uh, in new york which when you go you can visit so uh, you know this interconnection between countries i feel will help to open up a lot for yeah. people and their minds yes But i don't I know agree. what is your thought on this So there have been cases of interaction, like uh, some years back, Victoria and Albert uh, Museum in London. They had uh, some exchange arrangement with the Lahore Museum. So um, uh, then there was, uh, uh, I think, um, uh, uh, there was uh, some other um, uh, connection also, like the uh, the architect of um, Lahore Museum. There was a uh, celebration. Uh, Uh, in london and there also um, uh, his work or uh, from uh, museum and nca was uh, taken there the problem only is that uh, these are uh, extremely extremely valuable uh, stuff and if you are planning to lo- loan them or lend them to uh, another country's museum then the process the bureaucratic process and the uh, sops are such that it it's a herculean task and fraught with danger and no bureaucrat uh, heading the museum will risk that that uh, such valuable stuff should be moved uh, and the conditions of uh, its transport are obviously very very strict and valuable but uh, some kind of uh, interaction with the uh, uh, international museums uh, obviously I, i think that will be a good idea in fact this documentary pakistan's uh, best kept secret uh, it um, has uh, started a lot of uh, discussion in uk and um, some educational institutions and some museum associations they have um, uh, screened and discussed there were panel discussions and now they want to somehow to uh, focus on the educational aspect of uh, this project and the lord museum's uh, uh, relevance to the british or south asian community in in uk so such uh, documentaries can also help raise awareness uh, about uh, um uh, uh, lahore museum or such other museums and in fact i should mention one uh, organization and one individual who played a pivotal role in making this happen was a uk based organization interestingly called samosa uh, uh, samosa media uh, run by anwar akhtar who then he realized that uh, no one knows about lahore museum in uk although there is such a huge uh, uh, south asian uh, population there and also the british have such a, uh, sort of uh, umbilical uh, connection with the museum so i think uh, this awareness raising can then lead to 
some kind of uh, common projects or some kind of partnerships which we are referring to you have also been doing a lot of theater uh, what do you think uh, can be the uh, themes that children in the country uh, would like to see in theater you know um, what do you think as adults we can show them through the world of theater which could ignite this interest in history or our culture or what is in the museum ऐसे आपने कहा एक तो आपने वो दारा शिको का जो एक प्ले किया पर प्लेस भी कितने बच्चे देखते आते हैं हाँ नहीं वो तो खैर दे है टू बी स्पेशली टेलर मेड फॉर चिल्ड्रन तो हमने किए थे मसलन एक हमने प्ले वन वे ऑफ अप्रोचिंग ए सब्जेक्ट फॉर चिल्ड्रन था बॉर्डर बॉर्डर एक हमारा प्ले था ये जो इंडिया पाकिस्तान बॉर्डर पे जो एक्सरसाइज होती है वो जो फ्लैग वॉइस्टिंग सेरेमनी और फ्लैग लोअरिंग सेरेमनी जिसको फिर थाउजेंड्स ऑफ पीपल कम एंड वॉच इज एज ए स्पेक्टेटर स्पोर्ट फ्रॉम बोथ साइड्स एंड पार्टिसिपेटरी द ऑडियंस इज पार्टिसिपेट्स एंड रेस स्लोगन्स व्हेन द फ्लैग्स एक्चुअली इंटरेस्टिंग फ्लैग्स आर लोअर्ड बट इनफैक्ट इफ यू लुक एट इट फ्रॉम अ डिफरेंट पॉइंट द फ्लैग्स आर एम्ब्रेसिंग so the one flag comes from there one from there at one point they are embracing like this so uh, anyway we um, uh, had a play which in which uh, children from amritsar and children from lahore joined and they workshop together then they performed on both sides and apart from uh, and the the message of the play and uh, the children um, sort of uh, as innocent uh, uh, um symbols or campaigners for peace but uh, they also then developed friendships these uh, young kids they were i think 10 12 14 year old kids and now um, this was about 15 years ago even now they have uh, maintained those friendships many of them so आवाज नहीं आ रही अभिषेक अभिषेक चले गए हैं देख ख्याल रखना अगर वो दोबारा लॉग इन करते हैं तो तो हर्ष मैं तब तक आपके साथ में यही बात करना चाहती हूँ कि यू नो इन इंडिया इफ यू सी द काइंड ऑफ म्यूजियम्स वी हैव Uh, of course we have very beautiful museums uh, in delhi for example you know we have uh, in even in uh, bangalore and in mumbai the victoria museum so there are some very nice museums but i think even in our country i find that uh, museums are also plagued by this one big problem that there isn't enough funds 
to develop them into more interesting spaces and uh, there aren't enough people visiting museums so if you ever go to a museum many times in the morning you will find uh, a stream you will find queues of school children getting down from buses and entering the museum and the way they uh, look at the museum uh, exhibits is not um, not very exciting i mean there are very uh, few guides who can really make it very exciting for children to uh, be in a museum so That's people are just uh, looking and passing by so it's um, i think the issues are the Could same even for us disconnect so i'm back Shai ji, welcome back. So we were just have very similar issues even in India, where we find that school children are being uh, pushed in queues, and uh, we are not able to make the museum a very interesting space for the child. There are some which are now coming up with uh, digital uh, uh, technology to help out. Uh, there's a science and technology museum where you can look and feel and touch and play. and uh, you know do things uh, and see the science exhibit uh, but when it comes to cultural uh, museums there's a lot we can improve on i feel uh, so uh, this has been a i want you to ask you one more thing shahid ji about lahore museum uh, usme jo um, jaise uh, aapne wo samaira ji ne bola tha ki uh, because in um, islam there is no uh, figurines uh, that are uh, you know uh, worshiped unlike other religions uh, so very often um, artists would work around geometric designs or nature to uske bare mein thoda sa bataiye islamic art ke bare mein persian art ke bare mein to pehle to ye hai ke actually jo zyada है नो गो एरिया वो है रिप्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ रिलीजियस पर्सनैलिटीज लाइक प्रॉफिट्स और दोज वेरी क्लोज टू द प्रॉफिट और गॉड और माइटी सो दैट विजुअल रिप्रेजेंटेशन इज यूजली सर्ट ऑफ नॉट अलाउड बट वेन इट कम्स टू रिप्रेजेंटिंग वर्ल्डली इमेजेस और सेकुलर इमेजेस एंड प्रिंसेस एंड प्रिंसेसिस एंड किंग्स और कॉमन पीपल एंड पेजेंट्स देन हंड्रेड्स ऑफ पाकिस्तानी और मुस्लिम और इंडियन मुस्लिम पेंटर्स वेल एम एफ हुसैन ऑब्वियसली इज वन एग्जाम्पल सादकैन इज अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग एग्जाम्पल फ्रॉम पाकिस्तानी साइड सो दे हैव सर्ट पेंटेड एंड our um, history of the miniature art which is predominantly uh, muslim indian uh, contribution and then uh, comes uh, calligraphy so uh, we, that was where um, it was strictly uh, enforced this uh, denial of um, uh, the uh, rep uh, visual representation then they went to uh, went for um, calligraphy so quranic calligraphy or calligraphy in general uh, persian or arabic so some beautiful uh, paintings and murals were made uh, um, which uh, in in a way is a, a singular contribution to indian uh, art um, the, this calligraphy or the geometrical Uh, designs which are now quite widespread all over south asia so people find ways of expressing their creativity if they are given one uh, they find one door flows they will find another one so i think uh, although um, uh, i am not in favor of such restriction but sometimes there could be a blessing in disguise and when you are forced to look for other ways then you come up with some sort of uh, uh, great um, inventions and contributions yes. and and we see a lot of that islamic art uh, even in india when we go to uh, you know whether it's the taj mahal or it with the dala it it the mudra dala or we go to uh, you know um, uh, some of these uh, places we do see 
motifs uh, on tiles or motifs on walls which are painted uh, you know, which have very strong influence of uh, this kind of uh, islamic art in a, a persian art especially what we see in turkey today we see some of that also so i am not uh, an expert and i cannot trace the history of how that art came here but that is definitely something which would be interesting to to try and trace that journey mm -hmm. and i think tracing our journey is um, is really what heritage is all about and we see that in museums so um i i am i'm this is one tradition this uh, non uh, represent representation of uh, mm -hmm. art but then artists all over the region they have made um, sort of huge contributions in visual representation and painting goddesses and painting uh, human characters so um, uh, i don't think uh, an artist can be um, for too long restricted by such um, uh, kind of uh, restrictions and bans even now sometimes Uh, certain uh, works of arts are banned but uh, usually that means that they find some other way of uh, expressing the same thought so this uh, struggle sometimes um, such restrictions give you more uh, energy and more inspiration to uh, find uh, more innovative ways of uh, expressing yourself that was really a lovely conversation with you and uh, yes. we could have uh, we could have spent some more time and definitely i would love to come and see the museum uh, some day uh, hopefully that will happen uh, thank you so we much. are we are guest whenever you come and hopefully it will be soon and i wish all the best to harsh narayan and the um, uh, indus valley film festival people they have done a wonderful job and i hope it continues sir i wanted to know what is next with ajoka what are you planning what uh, new uh, uh, projects which we are conceiving right now well uh, i mean there are uh, several things in fact one project which might interest you which uh, uh, is about uh, the uh, the the partition and the major players in the in the partition of 47 and uh, how would they look at um, what they did in the 40s if they were able to communicate with us today so so this is just an idea which i'm trying to develop along with uh, anwar akhtar and apart from that uh, we are now working on online uh, not only online classes because of the uh, corona restrictions but also working on online theater virtual theater so presenting plays uh, participated by actors from different parts of the world really through zoom or through uh, skype and uh, we have tried um, it uh, once uh, just a few weeks ago a play called manto online so this really? is our manto play in which we showed uh, like one was sitting in houston texas and one was sitting uh, in karachi and uh, they interacted uh, as if they were on one stage and it was it was a fascinating uh, experiment and we hope to develop it further so uh, then there are some other plays and we are hoping that uh, these restrictions will uh, be lifted soon and we'll be able to uh, perform in public on the ground right and in india also you have a lot of followers so many followers and uh, everybody awaits when next ajoka is coming uh, with the yeah we would love to it has been now several years and we have always found uh, indian audience so appreciative and our indian counterparts so helpful it has been uh, a great experience um, for ajoka to perform for indian audience and uh, take the message of peace and goodwill and I, i hope our journey will resume soon sure sure uh we thank you for joining uh, today and it was a very enriching discussion with you and we hope that you will uh, 
continue to be part of our journey and we are trying to create this south asian network of artists musicians and filmmakers uh, so that uh, one, they communicate and one always with you harsh so yeah. whatever you do uh, you have our full support and uh, i hope uh, we'll be meeting soon for this master class yeah the uh, after tomorrow the after tomorrow so priti you want to conclude yeah sure so thank you so much uh, shai ji that was really enriching like harsh said but i opening also and uh, i hope that very soon uh, we will meet and you know you will be able to come to india with a new production of ajoka ke we will be able to come to pakistan at least to visit uh, pakistan's best thank guests. you so much thank you so much it was really a pleasure thank you sir thanks a lot okay see you